From the heart of the jungle comes a savage cry of victory. This is Tarzan, Lord of the Jungle. From the black core of dark Africa, land of enchantment, mystery, and violence, comes one of the most colorful figures of all time, transcribed from the immortal pen of Edgar Rice Burroughs. Tarzan, the bronzed white son of the jungle. And now in the very words of Mr. Burroughs, the story of the drum without a heart. As everyone knows, most of Africa swelters beneath the tropical sun. And yet in the very heart of Central Africa, astride the equator, is the ruined Zore mountain range that is never without snow and ice and raging torrents of glacial rivers. In a small cafe in Nairobi, there was a man whose great ambition it was to climb Ruin Zori. No, with Jean Leclerc, it was more than an ambition. It was a passion. I tell you, it has been done. It can be done again. Yeah, by the Amin Pasha Relief Expedition, by the British Museum Expedition, by a few others with fantastic sums of money to spend on men and equipment. But Deutsch, it is only 17,000 feet. Only? Well, I've climbed peaks almost that high before. Yeah, and so have I. Higher peaks, even. But Alaska and Switzerland and South America are not Africa. But if other people have done I it now... I told you, Leclerc, those expeditions had every known piece of equipment. <sighs> and even then, many of them didn't reach any of the peaks. Of course, if you are satisfied with a partial ascent... No, no, I'm not. Whether or not you agree to go with me, I intend reaching the summit of those mountains. And neither the elements, nor animals, nor man is going to keep me from achieving my purpose. Ach, you haven't a chance. Ruin, sorry. Ah, you're crazy, Leclerc. Maybe. Maybe just crazy enough to accomplish it. It was strange that in a land of incessant heat, in a country where men used to the jungle had almost forgotten that other climates existed, the snowy peaks of Ruins Ore should have been the subject of another conversation. One that was taking place far from Nairobi in the tiny native village of the Punya tribe. But Tarzan, many mahogany trees grow in ruins. Or... Yes, Kuluk, but the land is dangerous. Animals, warlike savages, snow and ice. What snow, ice, Tarzan? Well, Togo, snow and ice are... Uh, well, they're, they're cold. Cold? <laughs> it's a little hard to explain. S snow is like rain, only... Uh, different. It's, uh... He's not clear. Maybe take Torgo with us when go Ruinzori? I can see no need to travel to the mountains of Ruinzori. The missionary school can be built of bamboo or other woods that grow near here. We promised missionary best building in land if he come here. We build school of mahogany. Natal mahogany come from Ruinzori. Well, if you've made up your mind that we must have Natal mahogany, I'll go with you, Kuluk, but I feel that it's... Doesn't rather... take Torgo. Show him snow, ice, mokany. No, this is one trip I can't take you on, Torgo. Never before have I been to a land as dangerous but as this. take Torgo, please. Take Torgo, Ruzori. Oh, no, I'm sorry, but I but can't. Torgo hate Tarzan. Tarzan me. Not like Tarzan anymore. Torgo safe on trip if Tarzan there. Well, perhaps if I could secure the skins of animals with heavy coats so that Torgo would not freeze on the trip. Kuluk, grown man for he see snow. Nice for boy to see. Yes, I guess you're right, Kuluk. I tell Torgo. <laughs> no, no, no. Let's keep it as a surprise. Huh? <laughs> yes, we make surprise. I'll leave the village now and I'll do some hunting. When I've secured warm skins and cured them, I shall return here for Torgo and you. We will go to the land of ruins, Ori. <laughs> And even as the mountain climbers left Nairobi to start on their expedition, and as Tarzan and Kuluk in the Punya village planned their journey to Ruinzori, the natives there, perhaps the most fierce of all of Africa's savages, beat their voodoo drum. Violence was in the making. God of Ruinzori angry, not smile upon our people. It is true, mighty chief. Each moon are less of great trees. And when are no more trees, people of Ruanzori not able trade for food, for heights, for other things they need. We beat voodoo drums to God of Ruanzori, but he not here. Why? Why? Because drum not have heart. It against law of white man now to give heart to drum. We listen law, white man. 
or voice God of Ruin Zori. We cannot anger God too much. Then we give heart to drum. I, great witch doctor of Ruin Zori, look into smoke from ceremonial fire. What do you see? Ah, see strangers come our land. See heart for drum. <laughs> In just a moment, we shall continue with our story, The Drum Without a Heart. In the next few days, many animals contributed their lives so that warm clothing would be available for the trip to Ruanzori. And then Tarzan went home to cure the skins and fashion the garments. He was far from the Punya village when the white men who intended to climb Ruanzori's peaks neared the boma of the Punya crawl. Well, perhaps here we can obtain some bearers. Ah, we won't have any more luck here than we did in Nairobi or any of the other native villages along the way. You just can't get these natives to go to Ruanzori. Then we'll go alone. We've done all right so far. Ah, so far. But two men to attempt Ruanzori. I still think you're crazy, Leclerc. And then why did you come along? I don't know. Unless it's because I'm crazy, too. Hey, I found there, Mama. Yeah, a native. Jumbo, white man. How do you do? Hey, bonjour. Uh, that is your village ahead? Nadio, his village, Punya people. You need supplies, water? Uh, no, no. We already have as many supplies as we can carry, and we filled our water bags only a few miles back. But uh, we would like to hire some bearers and guides. Not today. Some punya men on safari now. Some on hunting trip. Others start build missionary school. All busy. Well, Leclerc, our luck's still holding. And at least we didn't mention our destination this time, so you can't blame it on any fear of the Ruanzori. You go Ruanzori? Well, yes. Why? I go Ruanzori a few days. Wait now for Tarzan. What's that? Tarzan, Lord of Jungle. He here a few days, then we guide you Ruanzori. You wait. Well... That looks like a good idea. Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, how long do you call a few days? Not no. Tarzan come here when hides cured. Warm clothes made. Why, you know these jungle people, Dutch. That might mean weeks and months even. Uh, I suppose you're right. Well, thanks anyway. <laughs> maybe we'll see you there. Yes, that's as likely as bumping into someone in the desert. Good luck, white men. Good luck on Ruin Zori. Uh, thank you, Santa. Uh, for a minute there, I thought maybe we'd stumbled on some help. Uh, what was that? I don't know. Coming from those bushes. Watch out, Deutsch. It might be a snake. A snake, eh? <laughs> a little native boy. A cute one, too. You go through, sir? Well, somebody's been eavesdropping. Please, Torka wants the ice snow. Take Torka with you to Rue Sorry. Well, you know... It might not be a bad idea at that. What? To take a small boy on a trip like that? Well, he probably knows something of the country between here and there. Uh, do you? Yes, yes. Talk on no way. Ah, see? And now having a native boy with us will prove to any savages we meet that we are friendly to the blacks. Yeah, it might. Talk on brave, too. To take you from big animals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Monsieur Torgo. We'll take you with us to Ruanzori. Maybe you'll bring us good luck. Yeah, I have an idea we're going to need it. What do you mean, Torgo's gone? Gone where? Not no. One minute here, next minute not here. When was the last time you saw him? Not remember, exactly. Thought maybe it was with you. Mama Nagamo, worry. So tell her Torgo, go with Tarzan. Fine, fine. So then no one's looked for him, huh? He'd be all right. He know jungle. Yes, he knows the jungle, but he's just a small boy. Now, now try to remember the last time you saw him. Think maybe it was day white men here, four or five days ago. White men in Punya village? Look for porters, guides. Kuluk tell them all Punya men busy. They go away. Do you suppose they could have taken Torgo? Oh, no white men... Not take small boy on trip Ruanzori. The Tarmanganis were going to the Ruanzori Mountains? Nadil. Lead me to where you encountered these white men. It will not be easy to follow a spore many days old, but we must try. 
I have a strange feeling that their spore will be combined with that of Torgo. We follow them ruins, Ori? Yes, we will follow them even that far if we find that Torgo's trail also leads in that direction. We go ruins, Ori. We get mahogany for missionary school. If we can arrange to get the mahogany, fine. But the life of that boy is far more important to me. Under most circumstances, Tarzan and Kulug might easily have overtaken white men. But this time, it was most difficult. True, Torgo's trail proved that he was with the Tarmanganis, but often the spore was faint, and many hours were lost trying to determine the exact direction the strangers had taken. With four or five days' lead, the well-experienced travelers remained far ahead. Now the ruined Zori Mountains loomed in the distance, its many snow-clad peaks seeming to defy man to conquer them. And as Tarzan and Kulak pressed wearily onward, a light snow began to spiral downward. Snow. Snow Zuri. There's nothing pretty about it when you stop to think of what it means. Means? It will destroy every sign that they've left, every spore. And even should we draw close to them, it will blot out their scent. Only thing to do, keep head for ruins, Ori. Are we to comb the entire 45 miles of its length? Are we to scale every peak? It'll take us a year. What we do? Well, we're not sure what the white men seek or why they saw fit to take Torgo along, but they could belong to that strange group that climbs mountains for the mere sake of climbing them. White men do that? Yes. And if they belong to that strange cult, they would attempt the highest peak, Mount Stanley. Stanley? Yes, that's the Tarmangani's name for our finger in the sky. So? Even our warm clothing will be little protection there. We have no ropes or metal-tipped staffs to help us in our climb. But we must attempt it, Kulu. Nadio Tarzan must save Torgo. Storm get worse. Much bad. Maybe you'd better turn back, Kulu. It isn't fair for me to ask you to risk your life for Torgo. He put your boy. To me, he's been like a son, but to you. We he... go on. Not waste time. Words. <laughs> Shots! Not far off. That's fantastic, but somehow we've stumbled under their path. Come on, Kulu, run! On the ledge, Deutsch! On the ledge! I can't make them out in the snow. They're being attacked by something. They, they above us, up rocks. Here, let me help you. Uh, there. Now, watch your footing. If you slip, you'll fall thousands of feet. There must be dozens of them. Well, there's no use shooting. I can't see them well enough in this storm. <laughs> Sound like panthers. No, I don't think so. Look, white men, big cats above them, ready to spring. Wildcats. Stand still to look. Use bow, arrow, through snow. I can hardly see them, but it's the only thing I can do now. That's one of them. You get one, all right. Look, look there. Someone's shooting at them. Eh, whoever is shooting has an eye like a... Well, that's the third. Not see any more wildcats. All dead. What in the world? Well, it's natives. We are friendly men. We mean you no harm. We come here only to climb... It is not important why you are here. Why, that one's a white man. What? Our only concern is for Torgo, the native boy. Where is he? Oh, that was some shooting. Three serval cats with three arrows. Answer me, will you? What have you done with Torgo? We we, we haven't done anything with him. We gave him warm clothing. We fed him well. I shall ask you only once more. Where is he? We couldn't help ourselves. There must have been 20 of them. Had we offered any resistance, it would Who have been... were there 20 odd? Savages, with bones through their noses and discs inserted in their lower lips. Hideous creatures. The fiercest ones I'd ever encountered. And still, they did nothing to Deutsch and me. What did they do to Torgo? Well, they, did, they did nothing to him in our presence. They just mumbled something about a, a drum without a heart. And then they made off with the boy. <laughs> In just a moment, the exciting conclusion to our story of the drum without a heart. Now, as Tarzan and Kulak stood facing Leclerc and Deitch, the fury of the storm increased, and the snow whipped across their faces with glacial fury. At first, the mountain climbers had been afraid of the jungle man, but now their fear of the storm was greater, and they defied Tarzan. We are... 
You're not going through this storm just to try to find some native village. But without you, we, we, we could not recognize the savages you claim made off with Torgo. Do you know what they meant by a drum without a heart? No, I didn't, but I've been wondering. Some tribes use a drum with which to pray to their god. In making the drum, they hollow out a tree. When it's nearly finished, they send a small boy into the drum to finish scooping out the wood at the very end with his hands. Yes? Before he can finish and come out, they clamp the head on the drum. A strong hide that a boy cannot break through. It's true. It's custom many tribes. It's unbelievable. The boy remains in the drum until he is dead. And he remains there afterwards. This is the heart of the drum, the, the element that makes it sound pleasing to their god. Or so they think. Leclerc, we'll have to join them in trying to save Togo. I am not turning back. I came to climb to the very top of Ruanzori, and that's what I'm going to do. You will never live to reach the top unless you come with me. You may come of your own accord, or with my knife at your back. Many miles away from the four strangers to the mighty Ruanzori's, the savages who had long made the mountain country their home met in solemn shawry. At last they had secured a heart for their drum. Men have drum ready, witch doctor. Almost is time for a boy to finish. Torgo, not what? Go inside, You drum. go in when time come. Torgo, cold. Not like snow, ice. Be still. Must not say not like snow, ice. But Torgo, not like. You and uh, God ruin Zori. He make great trees to die. Torgo, not care. Hope trees die. Not say that. Not say. Now, must make boy pure before becomes heart. You be sorry, small boy. Now must have ceremony. Else you not make good heart for drum. Togo not know what you mean, heart for drum. But he not like. Which doctor, get things we need for ceremony. Then boy change what he say about snow, ice, great trees, ruin Zori. <laughs> yes. When boy through ceremony, he not defy God. He be meek, quiet, Obedient. Well, at least the storm has stopped. And what good's it going to do us now? The snow's already blotted out every footprint. When they left us, they headed in this direction, all right, but that's as much as we know. You say there were about 20 of them, and yet they made no sound? Seems likely to me that they must have taken this path. Had they been forced to break through the underbrush, you would have heard them. Now, that makes sense. I would go on in this direction for a while. But, Claire, what makes a man want to climb mountains? Oh, I don't know. A desire to overcome great obstacles, a natural urge for man to climb upwards, an inherent wish. That's like the question, why doesn't she can cross the road? <laughs> Look, Tarzan, river. So the path ends in a raging river. Well, I guess we can't the go... The path anymore. continues on the other side. You can see that the snow is just a little darker in one spot there. Even if the path continues over there, we have no boat to cross the river. We'll have to swim. In that current? Through the ice floe? It would be suicide. Perhaps if I swam across, I, I could fasten your long climbing rope on one of those high trees over there. If you secured the other end to a higher point over here, the, the rest of you might be able to slide across on that rope. Yeah, that's a possibility. But you'd arrive there wet and freezing. Then you'd have to climb a tree and fasten the rope. We could bring you some reasonably dry clothes when we slid across, but by that time You'll it would... you die of cold, Tarzan. Better to die of cold than of cowardice. Give me one end of the rope. Tarzan took the rope in his mouth and plunged into the seething river. His mighty arms flailed the water. His strong legs drove him forward, but the mighty raging current of the river pulled him back. Large, jagged pieces of ice beat against him. Pieces of floating timber battered his body. At times, the men on the shore held their breath as Tarzan was dragged down momentarily. But his mighty courage made him fight on, and at last he reached the opposite shore. Half frozen, he climbed a great tree and fastened the rope. Then he fell to the ground, exhausted, beaten, bleeding. Here, pile the rest of the hides on him now. Maybe we build fire? Uh, even if we could find any dry wood, we wouldn't dare chance it. Those savages might be even closer than we think. How are his wounds? And they've stopped bleeding. It's the cold have that... to reach our side. Have to... Uh, you reached the other side, Tarzan. The rest of us have slid across now. Save Torgo. Have to save Torgo. You're in no condition to go on. You'll have to rest. Rest after Torgo. Safe. No, 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 no. no. Don't try to get up. Yes. Let me go, Leclerc. Maybe it is better if he gets up. 
he stays there underground, he'll freeze to death. I hear there's ceremonial drums now. There are no drums. Guess maybe you're a little delirious. Oh, I hear the drums. If, if there were drums, the rest of us would hear them. Tarzan hears sound of ant walking hundreds of feet away. He say he heard drum, he hear. Follow me. Be careful you do not step on a twig or stumble on a rock. A slight sound could silence us all forever. Oh, yes. Yes, I can hear the drums now. Yes, their camp is right below us, see? Begin snow again. Can you recognize any of the natives about their council fire, Leclerc? No, not through this fog, I can't. It's not fog, it's clouds. We're right up in them. Yes. They are dressed the same as those who took the boy. They wear the same ornaments. Those discs in their lower lips, those bones through their noses. And look, in the center of the council ring. A huge log. A new drum they're making. The one that requires a heart. It doesn't seem to have any hide across it. Maybe the boy is still alive. I can't see him. Many of their ceremonies last all night and reach their high point at dawn. Perhaps they're saving Torgo until the end. Uh, there are a great number of them. I don't know what we can do. No lie, for I'm still weak. Had I my strength, I could risk an attack even against their large number. But now I... Deutsch and I have rifles. They're both automatic loaders, so we could pick off quite a few if these clouds lifted. And you, you have your bow and arrow. No, no, no. We couldn't risk that. Our aim might not be good in this snow-covered land. And the first thing they might do would be to kill Torgo. Besides, I, I doubt if the clouds will lift before dawn. Well, well, if we don't use our guns, what then? We shall have to use our heads. Clouds get thicker. Good. We'll cover our actions. What actions? Just beyond the protection of these trees, we're going to build snowmen. Are you crazy? Perhaps he is still delirious. I know, I know it sounds mad. Perhaps it is. But it's the only thing I can think of. We must build as many snowmen as we can between now and dawn. We must find dye roots to color them so that they resemble people. And we must find wood and fashion many rifles. If the clouds lift enough so that the natives can see the figures, they will think we have a large army. Uh, and if the clouds lift too suddenly, they'll recognize the snowmen for what they are. In that case, you three will have to run for your lives. We three? Well, how about you? I shall be in the camp of the Ruinzori people. <laughs> Is dawn time to give heart to drum? Small boy, ready. Not fight now. What you want to go do? Just climb into log here. You small, you get in. Scoop out loose wood end of log. So log is hollow. Make fine drum. Nadio, to go do is chief command. Wait, Togo! Do not enter that log. Oh, stop song. Let drum be still. Who are you? Where you come from? I am Tarzan, a white man, and I am the leader of a mighty army. I have come to take Togo from you. Oh, my boy. Uh, not take boy from us. I have come alone and unarmed to show that I am not angry. But should you harm that boy or me, my soldiers will destroy your village. Where, soldiers? In the hill, directly above your village. They have many thunder sticks, and they can destroy you quickly. Oh, yeah. uh, here's two. Through clouds see many men, all with thunder sticks. But we let boy go. God ruins Zori angry, even now, less trees each year. You must pass a law among your people. Each time they fell a tree, they must plant two seeds so that new trees will grow. This will please your God. He will make your forests grow rich. You speak wisely. And we not want war with white man thunder sticks. Uh, go. Take boy. Santa, man of ruins, Ari. You have acted wisely. Put head on drum. Beat loud so all people come. We tell new rule. Two seeds for each tree cut is new law, ruins, Ari. Men, our paths part here. We go Punya village. Without mahogany for missionary school. We brought a pupil back. I think that's more important. The missionary will understand. You didn't get your mahogany and we didn't accomplish our mission. We returned to Nairobi without having climbed to Rowanzori's peak. No, we won't be able to brag about conquering the greatest of Africa's mountains, but we will have a story. A story, Leclerc? The story of a drum without a heart. And of a jungle savage with a great one. (laughs) 
We'll be back to tell you about our next story of Tarzan in just a moment. Only when Kuda, the sun, has completed its ride across the heavens, and only on those nights when Goro, the moon, does not shine brightly, do the strange creatures that inhabit the caves of Gonika emerge from the sable darkness of their dwellings. Then their pale eyes gleam from the blackness, and all who enter their Congo stronghold learn of terror at night. Tarzan, the transcribed creation of the famous Edgar Rice Burroughs, is produced by Walter White, Jr., prepared for radio by Bud Lesser, with original music by Albert Glasser. This is a Commodore production. (laughs) 